Hey guys, welcome to Charger Games. My name is Raja and this is another episode of Unity Android Game Development Tutorial. So in the last two videos we have learned about touch controls. So in this video we're gonna finally learn about accelerometer inputs in Unity. So I hope you guys are super excited as I am. So let's first of all take a look at what you're gonna be building in this video. So first of all we'll discuss a little bit about accelerometers, how it works and then we will build something like this where we have a cube and I have my device attached to my computer and I can move this cube left and right just by rotating my device so by using accelerometer this cube can move left and right and later on in this video we'll move something more interesting uh, here I have built something a airplane like structure and this airplane can move via our directions first of all let me change the code a bit for that we need this one and this one okay so this plane what happens is i can control this plane by using my android device and this plane moves and rotates by using the accelerometer so as you can see if i move my device left the plane loads left and it's right according to my device and I can move it forward or backward according to my wish so we'll do all these things in this video so I hope you guys are excited to build these things so let's get started okay so first of all let me go ahead and create a new scene here so I'm gonna create a new scene no we don't want to save that and in this scene first of all I'm gonna demonstrate how you can uh, get the accelerometer inputs from your device. So let me create a cube here. It's a simple cube as you can see So we're gonna Modify it a bit So that it looks like your Android device Okay So now suppose this is your Android device which you are holding in uh, landscape mode as seen in the video as you can see in the video suppose this is your android device and you are holding it in the landscape mode now whenever you rotate your device you give you can get accelerometer inputs on different axes as an example as you can see if i just click on this arrow button here as you can see this is the red arrow is our x axis the green arrow is our y axis and this blue arrow is our z-axis okay so if I now click on this rotate button and if I using this blue line if I rotate my device like this as you can see if you're holding your mobile device like this and you are rotating your device like this what you're basically doing is you are giving acceleration input in x-axis when you're moving in the left and right directions you are giving accelerometer inputs in the positive and the negative x axis okay the same way when you move your device like this you are giving uh, acceleration in the y axis and by these things by rotating your device in different directions you can give you can get accelerometer inputs okay and in unity we can get these accelerometer inputs and use this as our input as we can use uh, the keyboard the keyboard inputs or key arrow key inputs or mouse inputs as our input the same way we can also use this accelerometer inputs as our input variable okay so with that being said let us try to create uh, a simple script and move a cube left and right by using accelerometer inputs okay so first of all let me go ahead and create a 3d object cube here here we have a simple cube now I'm gonna add component and I'm gonna create a new script here and I'm gonna name it accelerometer move let's go and create an add and open it in mono develop okay so as you guys know we have an input class in unity and all of our input controls comes inside this input class so all of the functions or all of the things which help us to take inputs comes inside that input class the same way accelerometer inputs also exist inside that input class so how do we access that 
In order to access the accelerometer inputs, we simply write input dot. As you can see, we have acceleration as an option here. So if I select that and again press a dot, now we can take accelerometer inputs from three axes. We can take accelerometer input from the x axis, y axis, and z axis. Okay. So first of all, we're going to test the acceleration from the x axis. Okay. So we can store this variable inside a temp variable. So here I am storing the value of acceleration inside a temp variable. And then I'm just going to debug.log this temp value so that we can see how the value changes each frame whenever we actually rotate our device. So let's go and window console. Oops, I have made an error here. Float and explicit conversion. Okay, I have to make it a float value because acceleration dot x is a float value. Okay, so now if I come here, the error will be gone. Now if I run this game, as you can see, here we have a different acceleration inputs. So if I move my device left, as you can see, the acceleration input is increasing. It's currently 7. And if I move it right now, as you can see, now it's positive and the positive value is moving. Okay. So now I'm moving my device left and right. And if I move in the center, as you can see, it's almost near 0. I cannot keep it completely 0 because, yes, as you can see, it just came to 0. But always it's not possible. But as you can see, if I move it to the left, if I rotate to the left, Rotate it to the left, as you can see, we have a negative acceleration on the x-axis. And if I rotate it to the right, as you can see, we have a positive acceleration. Okay. Hope you guys can see that. We have a positive here and we have a negative here. Okay. So it becomes clear how the acceleration actually works. I have just tested in the x-axis. You can, you can do this thing in the y and z-axis also. You can uh, write debug and log and test these things in y and z-axis for your learning. Okay. So now let's try to move this cube using this accelerometer input. So what we can do if we want to move this cube? In order to move an object, there were various options in Unity. We can move an object using various options. So we're going to use a very simple method to move our device, uh, to move our cube. In order to move a cube, we will use a simple function called transform dot translate and inside that this transform the translate function helps or helps any object with which this script is attached to move in x y or z direction so we are not going to use this version if you uh, see here you have six versions of this function and if, if i just click select the uh, down arrow key we can see other functions as well so we're going to use this function where we have to input three values. So here in the x value I'm gonna input temp. So that means in the x axis I wanna move my cube by this temp value that we are getting from the x axis of the acceleration. And as the y value I'm gonna put zero and as the z value I'm gonna put zero because I don't want my cube to be moved in the y and z axis. Okay, so we are getting the value of acceleration in the x-axis. We are storing it inside the temp variable, and then we are translating our cube in that in the x direction. I mean, we are translating our cube in the x-axis by using this value. Okay, so the cube will be move. The cube will move in the negative and positive x-axis according to our acceleration input. So if I go ahead and run this thing now as you can see i can move my cube pretty much easily left and right so this is how you completed your very first acceleration input application okay you can use this thing everywhere so let's go and take a look at some more sophisticated things uh, let's uh, let's build that plane which you have built uh, i built that plane just because it is easy to demonstrate rotation and translation both with that cube uh, I mean with that plane like structure so let's just disable this cube here and I'm going to create a couple of, couple of cubes here uh, first of all let us create an empty object call that let me call that plane okay 
and then I'm gonna game object 3D object cube and I'm gonna make this cube a bit long in the a bit long in the z axis okay just like this and I'm gonna make it a bit thin in the y axis just like this and then I'm gonna duplicate this cube move it down below and now I'm gonna oops <laughs> actually instead of control key I have pressed the windows key so that this happened I'm sorry for that so now I'm gonna make it a bit small in the Z axis and make it a bit large in the Y axis to make the wings of the plane and make it more small in the Y axis now let's move it a bit different okay I think this is okay but we can also do one more thing we can do the tail part uh, let me duplicate it put it below and let me put it here and just this is a very easy way of creating a plane like structure now we're gonna select all these cubes and move it inside this plane so here we have a plane okay so now we're gonna rotate this plane using accelerometer input we have already learned how we can move the plane by using move anything by using those accelerometer input by using the transform.translate function so let's try to rotate this plane okay so as you can see here we are getting the input in the x direction so if we rotate my device in the left and right direction i want this plane to move uh, I want this plane to rotate in the left and right direction like this and this. Okay. So in order to do that, we're gonna use another function called transform dot rotate. As you can see previously we have used transform dot translate. Now we're gonna use transform dot rotate, which is another function, and we're gonna use this version where we are uh, we where we will give three values in the x, y, and z direction. So for the x direction, since we want our move cube not to move uh, with respect to the x axis, now remember previously we are translating in the x direction, but now we are rotating. So in order to rotate our plane or cube or whatever, we have to specifically tell by which axis or with respect to which axis we want to rotate. As an example, as you can see, we have our Z axis right here. This is our Z axis on the blue. So if I want to move my plane like this and this, so that means we are actually rotating around this Z axis, okay? So this is the Z axis and we are rotating around it, okay? And if we want to move our cube by the X axis, with respect to the X axis, then we have to move around it. As you can see, we have this green arrow which which just signifies that we are moving our plane with respect to the y-axis and here as you can see here we have our z-axis and if I select here as you can see the color is blue and same way if I click on the rotate tool as you can see this is the color blue that means this is where we are rotating our plane with respect to the z-axis okay so when we want to move rotate our cube like this we have to rotate our cube according uh, with respect to the z axis okay so in the rotate function for the x and y value we're gonna put zero and for the z value we're gonna put this temp so that means in the z axis according to the i'm sorry i'm telling according again, again with respect to the z axis or around the z axis we want to move the plane by this value which we are getting from the x axis of the acceleration okay so we want to rotate our device left and right but we want to rotate our plane according to the z axis or with respect to the z axis since only if we rotate it around the z axis only then we can move our rotate our plane left and right like this okay so now since we have written since we have written this code let's go and try it out and see what happens now as you can see if I rotate my device okay I haven't actually attached the script here so let me go ahead and attach the script scripts 
accelerometer move now let's run this as you can see now if I rotate my device the plane rotates exactly in the opposite direction okay that's because currently as you can see currently I am rotating my device to the left okay let me put this debug lock on here so that you can actually see the value As you can see now the device value is negative that means I am rotating my device in the negative direction but the plane is moving in the right direction. But right now I am moving my device in the right direction as you can see the value is positive but the plane is moving in the left direction. So why this is happening? This is happening because when we are giving the negative value here here it is coming and it is rotating according to the z axis and in the z axis value this negative value becomes negative and that is why it is moving in the negative direction when we are giving positive input and positive direction when you are giving negative input so let me go ahead and give a small negative sign here and now everything will be okay now if i run this game as you can see now i'm moving left so value is left and it is rotating left now moving right value is right value is positive and it is rotating in the positive direction okay so as you can see the rotation is pretty slow so let us come and give it a simple speed i'm gonna give it a value of 5s and i'm gonna multiply it by speed now as you can see now as you can see now it behaves correctly I guess now it rotates according to my wish so let's also try to make it forward move it forward so in order to move it forward there were various ways to do this so we can what you're gonna do is we can uh, do we can also of course do transform the translate okay let's try that transform the translate we have already done that so here we wanna instead of x-axis we're gonna move the plane in the z-axis because z-axis is the front direction as you can see in 3d as you can see z-axis is the front direction we want to move the cube we want to move the plane in this direction so that is why we have to get the value in the z direction okay so in the z direction we're gonna give the value temp times speed so now this transform the translate function will move the cube in the z direction according to the value of acceleration okay if we want to move this in the z direction we also have to get the value of the acceleration of the z direction so let's take a look, like another variable z and inside that we're gonna input the acceleration dot z so now we are getting the value of the acceleration in the z axis and putting it in the z variable and here we are giving the z value so by this value we want to move the plane in the z direction or in the front direction so let's go and run it as you can see now where it is gone actually transform the translate moves pretty fast so we also have to multiply it by time to delta time Now if I run it, as you can see, it behaves pretty good, or maybe not. It doesn't, it isn't behaving pretty good. Again, it is going in the opposite direction. As you can see, currently I'm moving my device back, but it is going front. And right now I'm moving my device front, but it is going back. So in order to change that, we'll do the same thing just here. We'll put a negative sign so that it moves in the opposite direction. Okay. And we'll increase the value of speed to 10 here. So now if I run it, as you can see, now our plane moves in the front direction like this and in the back direction like this.
As you can see, the control is pretty slow. You can give it more speed to make it speed it up more. Is it actually getting the speed? I'm not sure about that. As you can see, the speed is still 5 here, so let's make it 10 here. Okay. Now I have a pretty good behavior of the plane. Another way to do this, another way to do this is to do it like this. We can do transform dot forward plus equals mm, okay. I think this is a great way. This is a simpler way to do that. Uh, we can do that other ways too, but this is a simpler way. So this was the basics of accelerometer inputs in Unity, how we can use that, how we can use X, Y, and Z axis. I just don't want it to give you basic theory. I just wanted to give you a practical example so that you guys can actually understand how these things work and how to put it into practice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. So thank you very, very much for watching this video and have a great day. Thanks.